anybody who's been following Thomas and Stereo for any length of time knows that he's developing his own amplifier. And they know that he's been doing that together with Doge. He's made no secret of it. But as we heard more and more news and the fact that he was lending a prototype to friends of his and it was getting rather good reactions, I was very curious. So I placed my order in the hope to be one of the first in the world to actually receive one. But whilst I was waiting, I was thinking, I wonder how good this could be. I mean, let's look at it logically. This would be his first amplifier, right? So let's look at the facts. What did I know about Thomas? Well, firstly, I knew that Thomas has a lot of experience in the world of hi-fi. He's listened to a lot of systems. He's listened to systems that cost more than houses, hundreds of thousands of dollars. He is himself in possession of quite a few systems, um, very expensive equipment. But he's also listened to a lot of what I would call budget systems. And he knows a good sound when he hears it. He knows what he likes, he knows what he doesn't like. But he's also very aware that some people have other tastes apart from his. So I was thinking, well, how will he go about it? And why would he do it? Why would he develop his own amplifier when there's so many out there already? And it was clear when you follow closely what he was actually saying, that of all the tube amplifiers he liked, the Dodge was one of his favorites, but there's been plenty of others, there was always something he was missing. And he was always thinking, you know what, if I had an amplifier, I would want, for example, some tone controls on it. If I had the perfect amplifier, I would be able to switch from class A to class AB, for example. So he had all these crazy ideas in his head. And then for about a year or so, he's been working with Dodge, feeding all these ideas, and they have been sending him back samples and, you, and I just know it from him, and you can tell from, from his Galleon channel that he wasn't happy with this and he wasn't happy with that and there wasn't enough bass or there's too much attack and then there was, you know, whatever. And you think, well, he must be a really impossible client. But what we also know about Thomas is he's an incredibly good communicator. So I can imagine He's in the unique position where he's going to the amplifier designer and saying, look, what I'm looking for is this, 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 and this, and I don't want that, but I would like this. And you can imagine the engineers at Dodge scratching their heads thinking, well, how are we going to convert this into an electronic circuit? How many relays will we need? What kind of output transformers? What capacitors will we use? What architecture are we going to use? How on earth could we have a situation where someone could sit on their armchair and click AB and the whole amp reconfigures itself to an AB amp. It's not configuring from, you know, uh, linear, ultra linear to triode. No, that's not a simple step like that. This is going from full class A to full AB. And then he said, yeah, but I want automatic biasing and I want this and I want that. But obviously, the two of them have been working well together and they've come up with a result, which in itself is pretty impressive. So when it arrived in its packaging, I mean, firstly, I was really impressed. I mean, I saw the box and I thought, you know what, that's really nice. I like the wooden casing and I like the metal work that you could just bend the flaps and you could open the lid and it was just beautifully packaged. And I just thought, you know, this is nice. I, it's just, I like the printing on the outside. I like the whole approach. But then when I opened it and got my friend Maxim to help me lift it out, because it's damned heavy. I mean, it's really heavy. Um, I, um, I was blown away about how good it looked. I mean, how well it's finished. And then, of course, I couldn't wait. I powered it up. And then I was looking at these switches, you know, they're, they're just incredible, just switching from standby into the, it's just a nice click, a nice positive switch. And the little lights come on to tell you when they're all ready and you're, and you're back up and running. And the relays are nice. Everything looked good about it. 
and okay, I've got the the deluxe model, the model that um, with the special edition. Um, and I have to say, I was just couldn't wait to try it out. So I was thinking, well, what if I don't like it? What if for me, it doesn't sound like I imagine because I'm so fussy. I mean, I've listened to so many tube amplifiers in my time that it's, it's, it's hard to impress me. I mean, for a start, what I'm looking for is a natural sound. I want a very wide soundstage. I want all the instruments nicely laid out. I mean, I, everybody knows I love the Sugden A21SE because of its wide soundstage. Everything is clear. But I don't want it to be harsh. I don't want it to blow my ears off. I, when somebody goes ding on a triangle, I want it to ring. I want to hear all the harmonics, but I don't want it to sound harsh, as I say. Now, on the track Linda Paloma by Jackson Brown, which I use extensively in, in testing amplifiers in the beginning, there's a moment where the whole band stops. It's a little pause after the first sort of couple of verses. And on the left hand of the piano, there's a very low note. And a really good amplifier is able to give you the whole sound of that note, all the harmonics around that note, it can control it. But also a good amplifier can give you the right th amount of thump from the bass drum. Um, and from the word go, this Galleon amplifier was doing everything, everything correctly. And I was thinking, how is this possible? Now, to be honest with you, at first, setting it all up and everything is, is kind of tricky because if you read the instruction manual and you look on the front, it's all rather complicated because Thomas has packed so much into this amplifier. For a start, okay, you've got the usual standby, but then you've got a button that says change <laughs> and then you've got another one saying bias and another one with class and this is A and AB and then you've got the tubes one two three four lined up and your input selector and your tones and then on here on on this one here you've got sound A, T and B. Well after reading the manual and setting it up I decided to go well A is the first letter of the alphabet I like class A equipment so let's just stick it on A and let's put it on class A and put it on sound A and just try that. And to be honest with you, that's where it stayed ever since because it's just great. It's really, really good. Now, obviously I have experimented a little bit. I did try putting it into B for a while. And to be honest, I couldn't tell a big difference between B and A. Sorry, Thomas, but you say it yourself, I, I really don't like straining to hear a little difference when I'm enjoying music. But I couldn't really decipher a very big difference. Um, when you put it onto T, there was a, like a 6 dB gain because this is where the bass and the treble controls kick in. And when I was playing some early uh, recordings, jazz recordings of Django Reinhardt, which are taken from the 78s, they are a bit harsh. And just tweaking that treble down a little bit was very, very nice actually. It just warmed it all up and gave it that sound of an old 1940s radio, to be honest. And it was lovely. It was um, a bit like listening to an EL34 uh, amp. So let's summarize. If you were to invest four and a half thousand dollars in a tube amplifier, and that includes shipping and taxes and everything, if I understand correctly, from the website. And you decide to go for the Galleon TS120 Special Edition. What are you going to get for your money? Firstly, you're going to get a 30 watt RMS per channel Class A tube amplifier. The amplifier will have five inputs, one of which is uh, HT input, a home theater, which is very useful for some, RCA inputs. 
you're going to have two subwoofer outputs, which uh, you can switch to mono on the switch on the back, or stereo, which can be very useful for many. You're going to have a 50 watt per channel RMS class AB amplifier. You can also have an amplifier which will allow you to fine tune the sound in the sound setting from A or B and I'm sure on some speakers you will really prefer one over the other. You even can switch it onto the tone controls, just switch them in and then you can use the tone controls for fine tuning especially on those annoying recordings. It's a tube amplifier so you can try tube rolling, you can switch from the KT88, which I've never really been a fan of, but in this amplifier they sound just fantastic. You can switch them to the 120s and have a little bit more power. There's a switch on the back where you can, if you've got any ground loop hums, you can put it onto low noise or normal. But also, you're going to get a really fantastic remote control. Now, this remote control is one of the best I've had in my hands for a very, very long time. It's way nicer than most, to be honest with you. The feel of it, the size, the weight. You can mute the amplifier just with a touch, bang. You can bring it back. You can put the whole amplifier on standby. There's not many amplifiers where you can do that from the remote control. The volume control, I really like the volume control. By just one tiny touch, a little click, it will go up one dB or drop a dB. It's fantastic, you can really fine tune it. And if you leave your finger on it, it just goes at a nice pace, it doesn't go crazy. Um, the input, you can switch inputs from the, all from the remote control. You can even switch from class A to AB. Now there are a few stages you have to go to and you have to confirm it with the change button but that's very well explained in the instructions. So you know honestly this is an incredible amplifier. It's one of the best amplifiers I've heard in a very very long time and this amplifier, I'm glad I ordered it, is going to stay in our listening room here in Belgium and we're going to have one delivered to London because it's just so good so that if people come and want to hear the Sibelius loudspeakers, this is going to be my amplifier of choice to demonstrate them with. Sure, we've got all the others, the solid states, and whatever the customer wants to hear, but this is a really good amplifier. Don't let anyone say otherwise. Dodge and Thomas have done a fantastic job, so congratulations. I have no hesitation in recommending it. Now, is there something negative that I don't like about it? I've been trying to think of something because I should do, right? I'm, I'm a reviewer and people might think, well, Harley's lost his marbles or something, but the only thing I can think of is maybe these blue lights, but even then in our listening room here in Belgium, blue is our base color, so it also looks nice. Maybe um, someone doesn't like the look, I don't know, but that's a personal thing. I have nothing against it. For me, it's fine. So, to be honest, there's nothing. I even like the little removable um, valve uh, cover because it's nicely made. You have to assemble it yourself, but it's beautifully done. The little detailing on the, on the, on the end here is very, very nice. And it's very easy to set back. I mean, I'm doing it, you have to be careful. And normally, I suppose I should put some gloves on or something, but it fits there very nicely. It's, it's, a, it's a good design. There we go, into place. Looks great. Um, so congratulations and enjoy. And I hope this is useful for you. Comments below. And um, until the next one, enjoy your music. Wake up.
Yeah.